KTVI St. Louis. Here's Fox 2 News Weekend. Fox 2 News. Here's to St. Louis. Good evening. Our prayers tonight are with three nuns from St. Louis caught in the deadly crossfire of a military coup. Rebel troops and military soldiers are battling for control in the West African nation of Sierra Leone. Americans there are rushing to get out, including three nuns from the St. Louis Archdiocese. But all contact with them has been lost. As Fox 2's Brian Edwards shows us, the sisters' home base here is very worried. The conflict between rebel warriors and government military forces in Sierra Leone is thousands of miles away. It is fighting that just got closer for the sisters at this St. Louis area convent. Now what do I do? What can I do? And for the most part, there's not a lot we can do. Sister Carol Ann Collins' longtime friends are missionaries. They taught villagers in the now besieged town of Port Loco. I'm hoping that some stability will occur. Sisters Eleanor Erwitz, Carol Kleba, and Ruth Emke have spent years in Sierra Leone. Their mission is displayed at the sisters' St. Louis home base. But now the Civil War threatens lives and has interrupted communication. Sisters in St. Louis are contacting American officials. To see if they would know if they could give us any indication of whether or not those sisters were among the evacuees. And then the State Department earlier today informed the school sisters of Notre Dame that their three sisters in Sierra Leone are not on the list of Americans who have been airlifted out of the country. So with no communication with them, right now they remain unaccounted for. It was very disappointing. I would have felt very relieved if we knew that they were out of there. Now, Sister Carol Ann Collins informs herself through the internet and daily updates. This shortwave radio was once the means of contact. No more. They can't find the missionaries. Their latest information on their whereabouts? The three were in their truck trying to get a passageway out. Their home is now looted and unlivable. The village gone. Most villagers dead. And returning to the capital city of Freetown is just too dangerous. So far, U.S. military helicopters have been successful in airlifting 900 foreigners out of the West African country. 330 of them are Americans, but the job of evacuating towns is getting tougher because the American embassy there is closed. There is really no safe, centralized place now to go. Elliot. Uh, Brian, what is the American government uh, saying about finding these nuns who, after all, were there on a peace mission? Well, they're not saying a lot. They've asked the sisters here in St. Louis to contact them if they find out where the sisters in Sierra Leone are because they really have to know where each other is so that they can pick uh, pick them up in the helicopter. Right now it's just hard to get any information. Absolutely. Okay, thanks, yeah. Brian. Well, the country of Sierra Leone just this year voted in a democratic government for the very first time. But history is proving to be more powerful. The West African country has fallen to several coup attempts and military governments this decade. Fire destroys a family's home, claiming the life of a two-year-old girl. The tragedy happened near the small town of Lebanon, Illinois. That's about 30 miles east of St. Louis. As Fox 2's Vernon Shaw shows us, the family is now struggling to cope with the loss. It just... I don't know. Vernon Zoltz is trying to make sense out of a senseless tragedy. Last night, fire roared through this two-story home near Lebanon, Illinois, killing his two-year-old niece, Samantha. Zoltz says his brother Dennis smashed the bedroom window trying to rescue the baby, but the flames and heat were too intense. Because the fire then, you know, came out. He got his hair singed up his face and everything. Right. Trying to rescue yeah, trying Samantha. to get into, into her, but the fire and that pushed him back. A white picket fence, swimming pool, a swing set for their kids. For Dennis and Sandra Zoltz, this was a perfect dream home for their family, but now that dream has turned into a nightmare. Oh, boy. You know, little two-year-old. Probably the smoke, you know, got her. And then the rest of it afterwards, you know. But, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, she was just getting at the age that they started doing all the cute things, you know. Samantha was sleeping in this bedroom that she shared with her four-year-old brother, Daniel. Fire investigators tell us the fire started in the bedroom of the oldest of the three children seven-year-old David. The damage was so extensive in that particular room that uh, it's probably going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to determine the exact cause of the fire. Vernon Shaw, Fox 2 News.
Both Dennis and Sandra Zotz and their two sons were taken to Memorial Hospital in Belleville, where they were treated and released. Fire investigators believe an electrical problem may have sparked a blaze. A St. Charles County Circuit judge begins his 30-day suspension without pay tomorrow. Judge Frank Connard received the suspension from the Missouri Supreme Court. It stems from a 1995 incident when Connard ordered St. Charles Police Chief David King to release a suspected wife beater from jail. King refused. The state Supreme Court ruled Connard had jurisdiction but found misconduct in his later actions. The suspension will cost Connard $7,600 in lost wages. The jury in the Oklahoma City bombing case retires for the night after a second day of deliberations. So far, they've spent 15 and a half hours in deliberations over the past two days trying to decide the fate of Timothy McVeigh. Back at ground zero, there was a larger than usual crowd at the fence in front of what used to be the Alfred Murrah building. And families of the bombing victims waited all day at another federal building for word of a verdict. But it's like wait, being outside the delivery room, just waiting for word, what it is, you know, what, what, what it's going to be. So it's just the anticipation of not knowing. Now the jury will resume deliberations tomorrow. Fox 2 will have live coverage whenever that verdict is reached. Two out of three Americans surveyed believe Timothy McVeigh is guilty of the Oklahoma City bombing. A poll by Newsweek magazine found that 66% think McVeigh is guilty. Only 5% believe he's innocent. And 29% say they don't know. Plus, 71% favor the death penalty if McVeigh is convicted. The town of Gerald, Texas does not have a funeral home. So residents moved to nearby Georgetown to bury the victims of Tuesday's deadly tornado. More than 700 residents packed the church to pay final respects to the Igo family. They were five of the 27 people killed when the Class 5 tornado ripped through town. Residents also received a scare last night when the funnel clouds touched down in the area. Two people were treated for minor injuries and released. Heavy rain greets Pope John Paul II as he opens his 11-day visit to Poland, and he started with some lobbying for his native land. The 77-year-old pontiff told his fellow Poles that Poland can play an important role in the family of Europe. Poland has been pushing hard to join NATO and the European Union. The Pope will visit 12 other cities during his 11-day visit home. President Clinton sees the expansion of NATO as a way to avoid future wars. We must shape the peace for a new and better century about to dawn so that you can give your children and your grandchildren the America and the world they deserve. The president pushed his NATO agenda during his commencement address to the graduating cadets at West Point. The U.S. Senate and the other 15 member nations would have to ratify any extension of the treaty. Closer to home, the Revolutionary War comes to life in Cahokia, Illinois. It was a recreation of George Rogers Clark's recruitment of French-Canadian citizens of Cahokia to fight the British. Each of Clark's five companies were formed today at the Cahokia Courthouse. These soldiers are credited with driving the British out of the Mississippi and Ohio Valleys. Tomorrow at 1, the group will reenact Clark's Council with Native American Indian tribes. Well, it's getting close to showtime in less than three weeks. The curtain goes up on the Muni's 1997 season. Individual tickets went on sale today, and the opportunity drew quite a crowd. There was a lot of interest in a lot of tickets to a lot of shows. Hundreds of Muni fans lined up to buy single tickets to a seven-show lineup. The wait wasn't so bad if you planned ahead. And besides, there was entertainment to help pass the time. The new season kicks off June 16th with Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Some young theatrical talents were got their big chance to step into the spotlight. Producers are searching for five youngsters to play roles in the upcoming St. Louis production, Showboat. Auditions were at the Fox Theater. Youngsters who were picked mostly for the show will do eight performances a week. And, of course, they'll get paid. Showboat will run at the Fox Theater starting on June 22nd. Thousands of Girl Scouts gather at the nation's capital to celebrate a special occasion. Fifty thousand Girl Scouts, past and present, were expected at this afternoon's sing-along. It's in honor of the movement's 85th anniversary. But they didn't just come to celebrate with song, no. Thousands also did the hokey pokey, danced the Macarena, and did a lot of hugging at the Washington Monument. <laughs>
And they deserve to celebrate. They do a lot. A lot of them out there. Wow. Okay, well, something's wow. not so fun. A broken bone, of course, can be a very, very painful experience. But your bones can actually heal and become stronger than they were. Up next, Dr. Herbert Haupt shows us what modern medicine is doing to help the athlete quickly return to the game. And our weather forecast is going to sound like a broken record the next couple of days. We'll talk about that. Plus, as we go to break, let's take a look at our allergy alert forecast for tomorrow in the high range. Main problems with grass, pine, and mold spores. We'll be back in a bit. You're watching Fox 2 News. Here's to the Assumption Creek Orthodox Church, experiencing the Mediterranean way of life by celebrating their annual Greek festival. Night on television is Fox Sunday Night. A monster in the closet, a message from the grave, which story is true, and which is beyond belief. Then, will the Simpsons' new business make the big bucks? As long as I have my earning power, this family's got nothing to worry about. Ow! And the Deep South meets the Far East. I thought you might enjoy a propane. You honor me by giving me gas. On King of the Hill, followed by the X-Files. It all starts Sunday at 7, 6 Central on Fox. Repeat after me. It's a whole new Hyundai. It's a whole new Hyundai. It's a whole new Hyundai. Are you with me now? Okay, pop quiz. The brand new 97 sedan that's roomier than Camry is achingly beautiful and has a warranty that would be your basic mother of all reliability statements. Yes, that would be the Hyundai Sonata. And right now, you can get $1,000 cash back. So there's just one more thing. It's called a test drive. So, get in the car. Hey, rumor has it that the primo place to see the all-new Sonata is at your Hyundai dealer. It's been millions of years in the making and stars some of the biggest names in history. Dinosaur Encounters, now through June 8th at Jamestown Mall. Weekend Warriors prepare for battle. Nowhere in America will you find more of the best brands for your lawn and garden. Great names like Scott's, Honda, and Toro than at the Home Depot, your power equipment headquarters. The most common broken bones for athletes are the collarbone and the ribs. In part two of his series on fractures, Dr. Herbert Haupt shows us how modern medicine treats these breaks. In our last show, we pointed out that fractures of the ribs and the clavicle, or collarbone, are rare in athletic activities. When they do occur, they're actually an examples of the body's protective mechanisms at work to prevent injury to the vital organs like the heart, the lungs, and the major blood vessels like the aorta. But when these fractures do occur, they're very uncomfortable, and they certainly do keep the athlete out of activity for a period of time. Now, fortunately, rib fractures typically heal without any specialized treatment. But to make the athlete more comfortable, we'll typically apply a rib belt, which is basically an elastic strap to help hold the ribs together, making it more comfortable to be active and also to take a deep breath. Now, the athlete can actually decrease the use of this rib belt as they feel more comfortable, typically within two weeks. And sporting activities can actually be performed as soon as comfort allows, and that may be anywhere from four to eight weeks. Now, like the rib fracture, the clavicle fracture, or collarbone fracture, will typically heal without specialized treatment. But unlike the rib fracture, deformity at this fracture is far more obvious and more common. It usually presents as a rather large lump on top of the shoulder. But despite the deformity, alignment is not important for the healing of this fracture. And surgical treatment here is usually not indicated. In fact, surgery is the one cause for non-union of these fractures. Now, like the rib fracture, we can make the athlete more comfortable by applying what we call a figure eight strap. And all this does is hold the clavicle in position for comfort. It does not improve the quality of healing. In fact, it can be decreased, again, as the athlete becomes more comfortable, typically within two to three weeks. Now, unlike the rib fracture, the athlete really can't return to sporting activities until they're cleared by their doctor and the fracture has completely consolidated. Now, that may take anywhere from 6 to 12 weeks. The good news is that once these fractures at the clavicle and the ribs have healed, it's really rare that they'll ever fracture again in the same location. So typically, the athlete can go back to all their activities without any limitation. And that's the real break for the athlete. This is Dr. Haupt for Safe Sporting. Now, if you have a sports medicine question, you can write to Dr. Herbert Halp at Safe Sporting, 5915 Berthold Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri, 63110.
Well, kids were all smiles at a South County shopping mall today. Clowns from the upcoming Moolah Shrine Circus put on a show for the kids and gave away a few tickets to the event. Kids also learned a few tricks, just a sampling of what they'll see at the real thing. The Shrine Circus will be at the Keel Center from June 19th through the 22nd. And bike safety was the goal at the St. Mary's Health Center today. Richmond Heights Police signed up kids for the Helmet Club. They also instructed them on bicycle safety course. Children ages 5 to 14 have the highest injury rate among all bike riders. Parents and their children gather for a special day in East St. Louis. This is the second annual Stand for Children Day. The event is to promote a clean, safe environment for children. Kids got to have a little fun, and there were health screenings, all designed to focus on the well-being of kids. And if you're an aviation fan, you might want to head out to the Spirit of St. Louis Airport in Chesterfield. The St. Louis Aviation Museum is holding its vintage aircraft days this weekend. Now you can look over the old planes. You can even climb inside some of them. Vintage Aircraft Days runs again tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And those old planes are well worth seeing. Oh, yeah, always, uh, always impressive. Well, are you feeling hungry? Does a freshly made hamburger sound good? Sound good to me. For 40 years, folks have been going to this St. Louis landmark for a good burger. Next, we'll explain why it's called the cruising capital of the Midwest. And pretty nice cruising weather out there tonight. Temperatures are a little on the cool side, though, as we go to break. Let's check the neighborhood temperatures in there in the 60s, including 62 at Maryville and 61 down at Grant's Farm. Your forecast is coming up next. special performance by John Tesh and it's Step by Step's Patrick Duffy plus all my children's James Mitchell. I was wondering if you might want to do a little cha-cha-cha. All new next Rosie. The coolest all sprinkles to come like the last of most is all that and more. more Here's the Rosie O'Donnell Monday at 3 on Fox 2. When you consider all that goes into making the new Oldsmobile 88 irresistible, like its roomy six-passenger interior, its many extras, its affordable 23200 MSRP, and the fact that 88 is the only full-size car to earn Consumer's Digest Best Buy Award an unprecedented seven years in a row, we couldn't resist adding one more. Now, get $1,500 cash back. 88 by Oldsmobile. Simply irresistible. It's a union of altitude with attitude and good timing. Just before I do it, total focus. Time stands still. It's exciting. I can adapt to any situation. Make the correct calculations and physics takes over. And always use a helmet. Commercial. You know, not all conversion vans are created equal. Sure, they all offer the comforts of home. But Savannah by GMC goes one better. Look, see daisy. It has this exclusive full-length box frame and uniquely tuned suspension for a superior ride. That's what makes it better. Leave it to GMC. See your GMC dealer today. Uh-oh, broke a nail. The 97 Mazda Protégé LX Sports Sedan, $12,995. Add cruise and power everything, and the price goes to... Add air conditioning, and the price jumps to... Add a CD player, and the price soars to... Add the best basic warranty in its class, and you get the idea. Now get the passion, or lease for $189. It has been a fixture on St. Charles Rock Road for years. And tonight, Chuckaburger celebrates its 40th anniversary. It's kind of like the land that time forgot. Ducktails and neon lights remind visitors of the 50s. As has been the tradition for the last 40 years, classic cars line up around the Chuck in a tradition they call cruising. In fact, owner Ron Stahl calls this restaurant the cruising capital of the Midwest. He even offers curb service. And for all those folks who are out serving the burgers today, it wasn't a bad day for it. Neon lights and ducktails. I yes. don't remember that kind of thing. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it was a uh, <laughs> good day to cruise. I'm, I'm yeah, not saying yes. anything to that day. Stay in your car. You've got to leave that alone. All right, well, we know <laughs>
Anyway, weather-wise, <laughs> let's just get right to it. It was a good day to cruise. Weather has been uh, very nice, although a little cloudy at times today, but the rain for the most part has held off to the east and overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning, much the same. Let's take a look at tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, heading out of bed, maybe partly cloudy skies, maybe a little bit of ground fog, but that would be about it. Temperature near 60 degrees. What kind of highlights do we have tonight? Well, we'll go to the jet stream. Two big features we're watching. First of all, a big cutoff low pressure system will be stuck in the Ohio Valley the next couple of days. That will keep it very wet and unusually cool from St. Louis to the east towards the mid-Atlantic states. Meanwhile, pretty warm conditions out over the southwest, including southern and western Texas, into New Mexico and Arizona, where temperatures will be well into the 90s or even warmer than that. Not like that here, though. It's kind of cool. 61 degrees, our current temperature. 87% is the relative humidity. Northwest winds at 3, and the barometer is steady, 29.90 inches of mercury. Riding the temperature track today, 59 degrees. That was our morning low at 654. 73 this afternoon, a little bit below normal. The normal high is 81 degrees. Let's go up to space, put the clouds in motion. Here's the low-pressure system that we've been watching and will be watching the next several days, only slowly drifting up to the north and east. We are north and west of the low, so a northerly flow will keep us not only cool for this time of year, but it will also try and trap, uh, tap some of this moisture that's in the Ohio Valley and push it back to the west. You can see that spinning around as we go to the regional radar pictures into motion, and you can see the moisture lifting northward through Kentucky into Ohio, southeastern Indiana, but it's trying to push back to the west here coming into eastern Illinois, and that will slowly take place overnight tonight, but for the most part, we're going to be dry, maybe a few isolated showers as some of this moisture pushes westward towards us during the day tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon, that low pressure goes absolutely nowhere, centered right about on top of Nashville, Tennessee. There will be some scattered showers over southern Illinois, but you get here towards the St. Louis area and points to the west. It's basically going to be partly cloudy and cool. All the warm air is trapped behind this warm front, which goes nowhere. It will stay stationary along uh, the Missouri River for the next several days. You can see the cool air here underneath the clouds and in the rain area. Louisville at 71, 70 in Indianapolis tomorrow, 76 down in Paducah, 72 here in St. Louis, but warmer out west. Kansas City, a full day of sun. They'll be close to 80 degrees. Our forecast for tonight, partly cloudy skies. Can't rule out a little ground fog developing toward morning. Shouldn't be a big deal, though. 58 degrees for the overnight low. For tomorrow, partly cloudy skies. Some of our eastern communities may run into a shower or two. If you live over in central Illinois, you might see a couple of these showers. But St. Louis to the west, it's dry and 68 degrees at noon. We'll have a high of 72. And the forecast for tomorrow night, still a few lingering isolated, keyword isolated showers tomorrow night with a low temperature near 60. Four-day outlook includes that chance for an isolated shower tomorrow. Basically a dry day. It should be pretty nice, 72 degrees for a high. And then pretty steady temperatures. The atmosphere isn't moving much, so the temperatures won't move much. Partly cloudy Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in the middle 70s. I think people are ready for some extended sunshine. Extended uh, sunshine, a little summer weather. I wouldn't mind a couple 90 degree days in a row, actually. Uh, uh, not me. <laughs> I'm, I appreciate the 70 while it's here. Probably good. <laughs> okay. Take the rain there. Yeah. All right. Okay, thanks, Chris. Well, Randy Naughton is up next with Sports Detroit. He's serving up some hot wings in Philly. She'll show you what happened in game one of the Stanley Cup final. And it's round three of the Michelob Light Classic in Forest Hills. Randy will show you who's atop the leaderboard next in sports. This edition of Fox 2 News brought to you by your quality Ford dealers. Backed by popular demand, the Great Percent event has returned to your Ford dealer. And that means your choice of low 1.9% financing for 48 months or big cash back on America's favorite car. Get one nine financing or $1,000 cash back on Ford Taurus. Get one nine financing or a thousand cash back on Ford Escort. There's even one nine financing on the hot new Escort CX2. The choice is yours. Big cash back or one nine financing. So don't miss the great percent event only at your quality Ford dealer. The brakes were last checked in 91. The pilot's nickname is Crash. A bungee cord is a bunch of tiny rubber bands. And you're worried about your camcorder? Only Sony has a five-hour battery, a five-hour tape, steady shot stabilization, and a swivel screen for easy viewing. The worry-free Sony Handycam Vision Series. By the way, did you know mountain goats are extremely territorial? Oh, don't worry. Sony camcorders are available at Best Buy. <laughs>
in the world of tools, there's only one true craftsman. Craftsman makes anything possible. Oh, yeah. If you ever go cruising through some famous expressionist painting in your Pontiac Sunfire, it looks like a work of art. It drives like a real scream. And now, it rocks. Introducing the Hard Rock Live Pontiac Sunfire with a special CD package and express pass that'll get you to the front of the line every time. Hey, what a scream, huh? See your Missouri, Illinois Gateway Pontiac dealers. Well, the wings are still hot. Well, you have <laughs> both the teams today have something to prove, right, Randy? Yeah, it's been a long time for both teams. It's been a long, long time until either one of them has kissed the cup. The Stanley Cup Finals are underway. The Red Wings haven't won Lord Stanley's Cup for 42 years. It's been 22 years for the Philadelphia Flyers, so both teams looking to end the drought. Let's go to Philly for Game 1, where the Red Wings come out shooting early in the first, but they find themselves shorthanded right off the bat. But what is this? A two-man breakaway, the ping-pong and back and forth. Kirk Malfi with the shot and the goal. Puts the wings up just like that, one to nothing. The Flyers tie it, but the wings answer right back. Joe Kosher with the break, moves in and beats Hextall. It's two to one, Detroit. In the second, they continue their barrage. It's Fedorov with a slapper. Make it 3-1. Scotty's boys. Done the crowd in Philly so far. That's until late in the second. The Flyers with some life. John the player moves in for the kill. Goes top shelf to get the goal to make it 3-2. Eiserman also scores for Detroit. Too much for the Flyers, though, as Detroit wins game one 4-2. Detroit has now 11 games won in their last 13 playoff games. There's a good feeling on the team, but uh, the, for the most part, most of them haven't been there, so uh, there's still a lot of work to do, and they keep guys like Vernon, Koser, Murphy keep telling them, uh, you know, that the next one's even better. Game two is Tuesday in Philly. While there was lots of golf played out at Forest Hills today, round two of the Michelob Light Classic resumed after a rain-interrupted day yesterday, and they played round three as well. Dan Issa has more from Forest Hills. From St. Louis, Missouri, please welcome Cindy Mueller. After making the cut by two strokes, things got a little rough for Cindy. A third round, 76, dropped her way off the pace. Cindy, did playing 36 holes take its toll on you today? Well, it definitely did. Um, I'm exhausted. Um, I've seen a lot of good shots and a lot of bad shots, but um, overall it was fun. This is just a five iron. Kari Webb looking to have some fun on number 13. She lips out her tee shot. <laughs> Webb finishes the day seven strokes behind this person, Annika Sorenstam. Annika moved up the leaderboard steadily. The approach on number 12 set up one of seven third-round birdies. She's in the clubhouse with a tournament low score of 66. Also eating up the course was Hiromi Kobayashi. She enjoyed as much as a four-stroke lead. And even with a double bogey on number 12, she will be paired with Annika in tomorrow's final round. I remember we played really good today, so I'm looking forward to play with her tomorrow again. Uh, it's going to be maybe a little bit of a shootout, but I'm looking forward to that. Annika is a really good player, so I'm watching her, but actually I don't watch her. I'm trying to stay my goal. So while Hiromi tries not to concern herself with what Annika's doing, undoubtedly the rest of the gallery's eyes will be right here on the 18th green tomorrow, as the top two golfers are separated by just one stroke. Reporting from Forest Hills, Dan Issa, Fox 2 Sports. Thank you, Danny. Here's what the leaderboard looks like heading into the final round tomorrow. Annika is on top at 11 under, one stroke ahead of Hiromi Kobayashi. Carrie Webb, Kari Webb, that is six strokes behind her. Three others at two under. Belleville Cindy Mueller is a plus nine. Well, the Cardinals look like they're starting to come around, and they look like they've got the Dodgers number. They finally got the bats going, and the pitching has been, in a word, outstanding. Todd Stottlemyre getting a nod in front of a standing room only crowd at Bush today in the third. Todd shows Raul Ma to see the bench. One of 10 Ks on the day, a season high for Todd. Take it to the third inning. L.A. up two to nothing, but Delano DeShields changes all that. Corks it deep to left. Little too high for Eric Anthony to handle. That brings home Todd Stottlemyre. Cards cut the L.A. lead in half. The Redbirds tie it at two, but in the sixth, Gary Gaetti connects, and he adds to it. Sends it deep into the gap. And he brings home Mark Sweeney and Willie McGee to make it 4-2 to two cards. Very next batter, John Mabry, disposes of this one. A two-run homer, his second of the year. He was 3-4 for four today to make it 6-2 to two Cardinals. The Dodgers add another run, but Dennis Eckersley shutting him down in the ninth. Todd Zeal pops it up to right. 
and it is caught. And that's the ball game. Cardinals win with a great effort again today. They win in 6-3. Eck gets his 11th save. Mabry with the homer. Eight straight road losses for L.A., while the Cardinals have won six of their last seven. Everybody in the clubhouse knows it's a long season and knows what it takes to win. You know, we, we were there last year. So, uh, you know, everybody's nobody's panicking and nobody's getting too high. So it, it's a pretty even keel in there right now. I have pitched poor the first three times at home. Um, you know, I have been thinking about it, uh, and it's nice to put it to an end. Cardinals can sweep them tomorrow afternoon at Bush. Well, you can bet the Boston Red Sox fans are crying in their baked beans every time they see former Bo Sox and current Blue Jays pitcher Roger Clemens rack up another W. He did it again today. The Rocket off to its best start since 1986. Took it to the A's in Oakland today, striking out Jose Canseco once. Twice, he had four and all today. The Blue Jays beat him 13-3. Clemens is now 10-0 on the season with a 1.85 ERA. The Rockies and the Marlins and the big cat on the prowl. Andres Galarraga, the base is loaded and it is gone. The Grand Slam homer, would you look at that sucker? 529 feet, the longest homer in Rockies history, the longest in the majors this year. And some more excitement later, Andres is hit by a pitch by Dennis Cook, doesn't like it. The cat charges the mound. Needed a head, needed a gut, a brawl ensues. Everyone jumps into the fray. Andres was tossed from the game. Cook did continue, however. The Rockies get the grand slam, the, the fight and the win. The final there, eight to four. So we've got more golf tomorrow. We've got uh, more baseball tomorrow as well. So we've got a pretty good weekend of sports locally on tap. That baseball brawl looked more like hockey, actually. Yes, it did. <laughs> really, there were no fights in the hockey game tonight, you know, which is ironic. <laughs> a big cat, and he is a big guy. Yes, too. indeed. Yeah. Okay, okay thanks, Randy. It is time to go find your lottery tickets. We'll find out if you're a millionaire when we come back. This edition of Fox 2 News brought to you by your St. Louis quality Ford dealers. Well, if I had money to tell you what to do, I'd go downtown buy a Ford truck or two. I'm crazy about a Ford truck. And you'll be crazy about Ford Truck Month, because now you can drive America's best-selling full-size pickup Ford F-150 and get over $1,800 in savings. Plus, get a bedliner at no extra charge. That's right, regular cab or super cab. Motor Trends Truck of the Year, over 1800 in savings. Plus, you'll get a bedliner at no charge during Truck Month. That's your quality Ford dealer now. You're moving along. Things going pretty much as you expected. Then suddenly... for women, new from Liz Claiborne. Wind chimes or a CD case, free with a $35 purchase of Curve for Women or Curve for Men. Music to your ears at Dillard's. The 1997 Mazda SE5 Sport Truck. Lease for $159. Add air and four speakers and the lease goes to... Add alloys and chrome and the lease pops to... Add bedliner and sliding rear window, and the lease runs to... Add an unbeatable basic warranty, and you get the idea. Lease or buy eleven nine fifty. Come on, kids. Time for dinner. There we go. program for fast-breaking news from Mercury. The Mercury Challenge is back, bigger and better than ever. Get 1.9 financing and save over $4,800 on Mercury Sable. Already thousands less than Camry and Accord. That is big news. Or get 1% financing and save over $6,800 on Mercury Villager. Sounds like everything's for sale. Everything's been priced to go. The Mercury Challenge ends June 3rd. Come over imagine yourself in a Mercury now. And welcome back, Tom. Some folks might not have to go to work on uh, Monday. Oh, I'd like to be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to see if there are any new millionaires watching us tonight. Here are your winning lottery numbers in Missouri. They are 17, 21, 24.